Hi, and welcome back to another lesson of the TI-84 Plus E student course. In this lesson, we're looking at mode settings and getting organized. And this is in our introductory section of the course. So some of the things we're going to focus on are clearing the main screen, deleting information from your calculator's memory, uh, checking calculator modes and setting things up so you're ready to do any calculations that you need to do, and also changing the date and time and the language as well. All right, so here's my calculator. And as you can see here, I've um, been doing a whole lot of different calculations. So if I wanted to start a new set of problems, or I just wanted to start from kind of like a fresh page, I can clear my screen just by using the clear button right on that right hand side under the navigation keys. So if I press clear, there we go, everything's vanished from my screen. Um, however, it hasn't completely disappeared. If I wanted to use my navigation keys and scroll up, I can see that those calculations are still there. Um, they're just not being displayed on the screen. Um, if I wanted to delete one of these though, say there was one that I didn't need or I used the wrong number and I didn't want to get confused later on, I can delete that individually by highlighting it and then using the delete button there and that removes that uh, problem from my set. Okay, and I'm just going to clear those. Um, but just before I do, I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that I've stored something under this variable A. Now, that's not really too important for the moment. Um, it's going to come up in later lessons. Um, but so I'd say I'd stored the wrong number or I wanted to store something else under that variable or I just wanted to get rid of it. Um, well, what I could do is I could go into my calculator memory, um, which is down, um, you can see that, that little writing there in the blue that says MEM on top of the plus key. Um, and that's where um, I can find my memory access. So second, um, so you can see we've got the second cursor up now telling us that we're in our second function and pressing plus. Um, and then I can, if I head down to this where it says memory management slash delete, um, that'll let me uh, clear anything that I want to clear and start afresh. So if I go into enter, so I'm going to head into real, because uh, that's where my variables are stored under, um, press enter, and there I can see there's that A that I had there, and if I just press the delete button, that will get rid of that, um, and I can delete all of those if I need to and then they're no longer stored in there. Um, if you're not sure where to find uh, the particular thing you're looking for, so again, I'm just going to go second memory just to go back, back into my memory management delete. Um, you can find any of it under all. So if you're not really sure whether, whether the variables fall under which bid or what you're trying to delete, if you're just going to all, that brings up everything that you currently have stored on the calculator. All right. So next thing we're going to chat about is the modes. Now this is really important um, that you get a good handle on the modes because you are going to have to kind of fluidly interchange them um, with what you're working with at school. So if we head in there, I'm just going to kind of talk you through what each of them do. So the very first thing here, we have maths, print and classic. So if we're in maths print, um, that means that the way the um, things are written on your calculator looks like how you would kind of expect from um, kind of formal maths um, text. So if um, if I quit out of that and we look at a fraction, uh, so if I go alpha and then the x to bring up a fraction, okay, if we're in math print mode, then our fraction looks like a fraction. Um, if I change the mode though, um, so I'm just using my navigation keys to scroll across here and then enter to change when it's highlighted. Um, if I'm in classic mode, if I type in a fraction, um, it comes up as a slash, sorry. So I'll just put in my, my one half. Okay, so this would be one half um, using math and using classic mode instead. All right, the next thing we have down is normal scientific and engineering. Now this is all about how um, answers are displayed. So whether we display them in kind of normal maths mode, whether we want them in scientific notation or in engineering notation. So I'm gonna bring up what that would look like. Okay, so here's the same sum, 50 times 2,000. This is what your answer looks like if you're in normal mode. This is what your answer would look like if you're in scientific mode, so using scientific notation and then using engineering notation. Um, that, that's your third solution there. All right, the next one down is float. And you'll notice this has uh, the numbers from 0 through to 9. So if you're on your standard float, um, your calculator will select up to... Um, 
<clears throat> we'll select up to 10 decimal places or 10 digits to display on the screen. But if you wanted to lessen that, so you display less digits um, or less decimal places, you can use float. Um, so say for example, I'm answering a whole lot of questions and I only want them to have um, <clears throat> three digits. I can quit out of here, all right? And then for example, I could do something like um, seven divided by nine, enter, and there we go. I'm only gonna get three decimal places at the end. If I was gonna do this with the with float turned on, and I did that same sum, there you go, I would get um, a full set of um, 10 decimal places. The next one we look at is radian or degree. Now this one doesn't have too much bearing um, until you get more into senior school and you start talking about um, these different types of angle measures. Um, <clears throat> so for the most part, I, I would say if you're in kind of year 9, year, year 10, you'd want to have your calculator set up to degrees. Um, and if you're dealing with more with year 11 and year 12, you probably want to have it set up to radian. Um, <clears throat> but again, you, your uh, teachers will instruct you more on what you need to set up with that to um, get the best optimal use of your calculator. Same with the next one. Um, the next one down is function, parametric, polar, and sequence. So this is all to do with this function editor, um, this y equals button, and what type of thing you're looking at with that. Again, um, probably for school, you want to have it 99% of the time set it up to function mode. Um, and there's really, unless you're doing specialist maths, there's really not too much need to kind of change that around at all. Uh, thick, dot, thit, thin, and dot, thing. <laughs> um, I haven't said that very well, but that's all right. Um, all of these are to do with what your graph line looks like. Um, so if I go into my y equals and say I want to sketch the graph of um, x plus 4. All right, well, I can graph that and see it there. Um, if I go back into my mode, so that's currently um, a thick line. If I wanted to make it, say, a dot thin line, the complete opposite, if I graph it again there, we can see it's now in dots and it's quite a thinner, um, more gentle looking line. Okay, so the next one's sequential and simultaneous. So um, again, these are kind of to do with graphing. Um, and they're to do with when you're graphing more than one uh, line. So I'm going to add in here negative 2x as well. Um, and we're currently in sequential mode. So you'll see that when I graph them, it's going to graph the first line and then the second line. Um, if we want to graph in simultaneous mode, then when I hit graph, they do both uh, graphs at the same time. And that's really handy for looking at um, kind of points of intersection on your screen. Again, the next one down, I'm not really going to talk too much on. Um, it's real, imaginary, and polar. Um, again, for most of the time at school, you're just going to deal with real numbers. Um, again, unless you're looking at kind of doing specialist math, which and then again, your teachers will instruct you what the best thing is to do. Um, next one down is to do with whether we want to show our table and our graph at the same time. Um, so this is again to do with kind of the window settings. Um, so you've got full window setting. You can have a horizontal. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, so if we go horizontal, if I graph those again, um, we can see that there. Um, and that uh, down below there, you've got a bit of room for doing calculations should you need to. Um, so that's if you want to do a graph and calculations at the same time. Um, we can then go across to graph table as well. And this shows your graph and the table with all the um, independent and dependent values um, at the same time. Okay. Um, next one, we've got fraction type. So this is whether you want your fraction as just a simple or as a mixed number. Um, answers. Now, um, this one's a really important one. So when you see auto there, um, what that's saying is that your answer is going to be the same as the kind of format that you've initially given your question in. Okay, so for example, if I did this sum, okay, so if I do this sum, three quarters times a fifth, press enter, I can see there I get 3 twentieths of my result. Um, if I didn't, if I had my answers set up into decimal though, um, this is going to force a decimal answer even when I've given fractions in my question. So there we go, now we'll force a decimal answer from there. 
Um, stat diagnostics, we're going to talk about that one a bit later on in the course. Um, so I'll leave that for a moment. Having that turned on, though, I would say is a really handy thing um, regardless. So I would say most of the time have that on. And then if you need to turn it off, you can. Um, and again, stat wizards keep that on as well. Um, now, last thing I wanted to quickly mention is here you've got some clock setting and some language setting. Now, I know sometimes languages can get accidentally changed on the calculator, so it's handy to know where it is to find that, and you can just scroll through, find whatever language you need. Um, in terms of setting the clock, if you press enter on that, you can select your how you would like your date and time to be displayed, um, what the year is, and mine's saying 2015 at the moment, so that's a little bit off because we are in 2022. Um, but you can just go through and edit all of those things there. Okay, well that's it for me from today and a um, bit of a long one, sorry, but there are lots and lots of things to get through and hopefully um, that's been really informative. All right, okay, bye.